How's it going, everybody? Falcon Ash K here. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is going to be the list of uh, 110 games that I own and ranked. And comparing it with Board Game Geek, uh, this video is going to be starting from 99. So, <clears throat> with further ado, 99 is Zombies, the card game. Uh, this is a little uh, simple version of Zombies, the board game which isn't really a board game, tiling game. Anywho, uh, you're using cards as um, a way to stop your friends from doing certain things at the same time you're playing cards to um, get your zombies or escape the city. It's a quick and easy game. It took a little while because the, the uh, <clears throat> rule book was a little uh, hard to understand at first and there's no real videos on how to play this game very well so it was still good I give it a 7 uh, and Board Game Geek gives it a 5.474 next on the list is uh, 98 with Circle the Wagons Circle the Wagons is another button shy game where you are placing cards on a tile or on a uh, a circle, um, 18 cards, 15 of the cards go around the circle and the other three are the main goals of the game. So the front of the card is the rules of what what has to be done and the back of the card is locations and objects that you have to line up to meet the goal. So uh, and getting the cowboy expansion you can play it solo uh, brings a little more depth to it. Um, I give it a 7. Board Game Geek is at a 6.127. Next on the list is going to be 97 with uh, Twin Stars Escape the Bridge. This was um, a sample that came with um, another button shy game. I'm trying to remember which it was. Um, but as part of the Twin Stars Adventure series, uh, you're using two cards as heroes that are escaping the scenario. Uh, you're using tokens on one side of the, the uh, card to show how far along the security guard is and the bottom of the the card shows how far they are before they escape uh... you're rolling dice um, you're moving characters you're taking damage and each character has their amount of life and special abilities that you're using and i give it a seven board game geek gives it a non -accolable. Um the next like i said it's ninety six is twin stars series adventure series one um, this one is a continuation of the previous sample that you got from one of the other games I own. Button Shy, uh, you're going to get 16 cards, 15 cards, maybe 18. I should do re more research on these. And uh, you'll have multiple heroes that you can do different scenarios with but each scenario has specific heroes that thinks it should go along with it. Both games are solo. I give it a 7. Uh, Board Game Geek gives it a 5.5. Uh, 95. 95 uh, Cosmic Run Rapid Fire. This is a solo roll and write game. Um, Actually, two-player, sorry. Two-player roll-and-write game where uh, you can also play it solo. Um, you are rolling these dice with symbols on them. Uh, your opponent is taking one die to do a specific action. You take a die. You're drafting dice. Uh, and your main goal is to get from your three ships to get to other planets along the row, uh, circling on dots, uh, land, minefields and stuff like that. Um, I was up at the uh, 
portal store when Stephen Finn was up there and um, but uh, Ryan that that uh, owns works at the portal uh, taught the game it was pretty good uh, I own it so that's that goes to show you uh, I give it a seven uh, board game geek gives it a five point six eight two yeah 94 sunset over water which is funny because that's another Stephen Finn game that I learned when I was up at the portal store that time that when Stephen Finn was actually there um, this one you're playing as um, painters waking up and going around uh, landscapes and painting the landscapes to reach certain goals or um, the goals are actually uh, what do they call those mm-hmm -hmm. commissions you're meeting commissions and then there's an additional bonus point if you meet the goal of that bonus point value say the last person in the corner or the last person to paint something you have a total of I want to say eight cards and you're using a card uh, to do that action um, you select a, a very small card it tells you when you wake up how far you can move and how many paintings you can paint or items you can take that day to meet the uh, requirements um, and then you put it in a discard pile uh, and then you'll keep on just drawing cards from that that pile to meet the goals I give it a 7 Board Game Geek gives it a 5 point nine nine five uh it has solo rules as well um where you're going around and doing the things the actions itself based on an ai track of cards i recommend it growl this is another kickstarter how about that um this Kickstarter is coming soon to a theater near you. I should be getting it by the end of this month, or at least the start of May. Uh, watch it over, come over on the boat kind of thing. But the print and play was also a bonus of the uh, Kickstarter, where uh, he gave us um, the printout for some cards. And low quality for the, because it was print to play at first well still is what am I talking about um, and I played this many times with my family then later on he gave us uh, better artwork better uh, uh, nighttime phase and stuff like that kind of messed up on on one of the roll right there one of the uh, the print and plays and then he gave us another one that had the full pretty much the full game print and play style it's a social cooperative deduction game uh, you choose a set of cards gold and werewolves based on how many people are playing deal them out uh, if a person is a werewolf then they were wolf werewolf zero um, and everybody else is humans you're trying to stay to be trying to stay a human there's going to um, be uh, people drawing everybody has a turn of drawing a card and then they can say hey I have a wound who can take the wound and you're doing this cooperatively with other people so you're trying to stay alive you're trying to stay human because humans get points at the end of the round or at the end of the the uh, second night phase um, so after you've gotten so far down on the list there's a night phase and the person who draws it reads the rule or whatever the effects are the effects take place each person takes a card from their hand gives it to a person on the left another person to the right so then they take their cards and you're also getting two cards from on your right and left added onto your cards shuffle them up and then you can say oh look I got bit during the night you know um, so that'll give 
other people uh, ideas of which one of the pe person on your light, right or left is a werewolf. Um, if you get three wounds during this time, you are dead. If you have three bites during this time, you are a werewolf. Any additional bites that you get, you can transfer to other people. So that's how bites get around the table. If you die with three bites, you die as a werewolf. If you die without that many bites, you die as a human. After the, the uh, last phase, last card is drawn, is the final night. And then you are uh, pretty much asking everybody if they've died or if they've been a human. Um, and, uh, or I should just say, if they're, 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 uh, if they're dead or not. Then, um, Wolf Zero, uh, will start to growl. Well, he'll, like, you know, snarl or, or growl, you know, like, real good. Um, and then the other wolves that have been turned during the night also start growling, too. The people that don't growl are humans, and they will look at their hand. If they have a number of gold cards in their hand, they get that many gold coins. You play at least five or seven rounds, and uh, the person with the most gold becomes the uh, growl champion or something of that nature. Uh, I've only played this with my family. I brought it up to the game store, and for some reason... The, the just not energetic energetic like they think it's like a um, one night ultimate werewolf where you know once you've been eliminated or actually war, werewolf where you get eliminated then that's it you, just, you know you're gonna walk away from the table kind of thing um, or I've played with people that are not enthusiastic about the growling and they're like growl 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 that's what is that that's you're not even in the game but that's what I've done with this game uh, so like I said I'm gonna get the hollow growly box pretty soon so I'll have the full version and the the, the quality of the cards and uh, that kind of thing it's just it's a phenomenal game <sighs> switch up from a regular you know werewolf all right now 92 heroes crossing a kickstarter um hero crossing you're going to be playing as a merchant building your your town and you're getting resources from the manufacturer to the seller and there are going to be heroes that are coming into the town and you're trying to meet their demands so if they want weapons then you're gonna to have to have a weapon manufacturer uh, getting the equipment to him if you're the last person to meet his requirements you get that hero and special abilities that the hero does you can you can activate building your town you're rolling a single die along with um, where it's going to be actually placed compared to where your town is at the present time. If you get a starburst, you can choose where it is as the active roller. Um, it is Infinity Shards. I think it was a Kickstarter, but I didn't back it. Um, 91 Infinity Shards. Uh, you are playing sort of a, you know, a combat game. You have a hero that's gaining experience or knowledge points. Uh, when you use your resources to activate the knowledge points, you get one per round. The cards that you're playing can also reflect how strong your hero is. So if you're casting like a uh, lightning bolt or fireball or something of this nature, at low level, it doesn't do that much damage. But the more knowledge your hero has... Um, it does more damage or um, if you have your knowledge at 30 it does infinitive damage so that will end the game really quick 
Um, you can also play uh, hero cards to help you attack and defend uh, from attacks. Um, there's also going to be a merchant or a mercenary row where you can just play, pay the points straight out and have that mercenary do his effect and then discard him or pay his minimum and have him uh, in your in your um, your cards. It's a deck building game. There you go. That's what it is. And um, I think there's four heroes in the in the box. Uh, I have the expansion, but have not played with it yet. Um, I give infinity shards 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 of infinity. Sorry about that. Uh, seven board game geek gives it a six point three eight six. So ninety is uh, Murderopolis. This is one of the two games that I backed on a um, print and play um, Murderopolis. Um, you are playing cards to find out who murdered who. It's like Clue. So you're going to have the place, the person, and the object that they did it with. And you are trying to meet the requirements. You can discard cards and then other people can pick those cards up to meet the requirements of their mystery solving. So many murders solved and you win the game. So that's pretty cool. All right, that will end my uh, 99 through 90. Uh, next uh, video will be um, the next in the, the sequence of play. All right, thanks for stopping by. Hey folks, if you like this video, give it a like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Uh, you can find me at my Twitter account at FalconAsh or Facebook account at Falcon Ash K. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below, or you can reach me at my email account at falconashes71 at hotmail.com. Uh, see you real soon. Goodbye!